Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. As you saw in my last video, I wanted to understand the functioning of the trimmers on the step-down converter. I discovered that one of the trimmers sets the voltage, the second sets the maximum current, and the third sets the threshold to show when the battery is fully charged. But this was a theory and I wanted to test it in reality. During my work, I often need to measure volt and milliampere at the same time. This is why I built a small device consisting of a cheap meter, a battery and a case. It reads volt and milliampere at the same time. Very useful, but not sufficient for the current task. Loading batteries takes time and I do not want to sit in front of the meter till it's finished. This is why I wanted a meter which does not only show volts and ampere now. I wanted to record the values over time. And in addition, I had to monitor the behavior of two LEDs. And it had to be cheap and easy to be built. You find many Arduino data loggers in the internet. Most of them write to SD cards. This is a good approach for many applications. However, it is quite cumbersome because you always have to remove the card, put it into a reader, import the file to Excel and convert it into columns before you can start your analysis. For my logger, I wanted a direct way into Excel. And the easiest way from Arduino to Excel is the keyboard. This has also the advantage that you can watch the results on the fly and stop the experiment if it does not meet your expectation. Very good for prototyping. So this is the plan. To build a data logger which is capable to measure volt and milliampere and at least two analog signals for the LED monitoring. And it has to key the results directly into an Excel spreadsheet. The precision is not so important for this purpose. The ingredients are an Arduino Micro because the Micro can emulate a USB keyboard, a small OLED display, a 5 ampere current sensor, a rotary encoder, a prototyping PCB and some connectors and cables. For this project, I use the approach with the prototyping PCB because there are quite a few connections to be made. And I promised in my last video to show you another possibility to build your projects. The building process is straightforward. I put all components on the PCB and connect them with colored wires. For the connections to the display and the switch, I use pin headers. For the Arduino Micro, I use a socket because I do not want to lose it if something goes wrong with my PCB. Some comments to the different parts. The current sensor provides a voltage which is linear to the current flowing through it. It uses a whole element and therefore is capable to measure currents in both directions. Zero milliampere corresponds to about 2.5 volts. Because I decided to use the analog to digital converter of the Arduino Micro and not an additional and more precise ADC, I discovered a huge problem. Arduinos use the power supply voltage as a reference to measure volts. And this can vary quite a lot. USB specifications allow 4.4 to 5.5 volts as VCC. Fortunately, a trick helps to reduce the influence of VCC. Arduinos have a quite precise 1.1 volt reference built in. If you measure this voltage with your imprecise analog to digital converter, you do not get exactly 1.1 volt. This value, however, can be used to calculate the momentary supply voltage. And if you know the momentary supply voltage, you can correct the reading of your ADC. You find a link to this trick in the comments below. By the way, this trick should be used at all the time if you want to have an exact reading of analog input with Arduinos. 
because the current sensor has similar issues. It uses also VCC as an input. I have to include a software function to set the milliampere reading to zero before I start with my measurements. The next problem, Arduinos can only measure voltage from zero to five volt. This is not sufficient for my experiments. To make sure I can measure higher voltages, I include a trimmer as a voltage divider. This allows me to reduce the maximum voltage to 5 volt. Today I use a 1 to 2 ratio, which allows me to measure voltages up to 10 volt. I also protect the analog input with a 5.1 Zener diode. The Arduino code is straightforward. It uses the libraries for the small OLED and the library for a rotary encoder. I have to admit, I love rotary encoders as input devices. They are very versatile. You can easily build menus, enter numbers and even acknowledge your selection with a built-in push switch. And they can be very easily mounted. Just drill a hole in your box. In this project, I use also a library called EEPROM. As said before, I can reduce the maximum voltage with a trimmer. To get the voltage reading right, I have to multiply the measurement with a factor. I do not plan to change the trimmer settings very often. This is why I want to make sure that the adjustment value survives a shutdown of the data logger. This is why I store it in EEPROM. The last step was the assembly of the whole thing. And here it is, the data logger with direct keyboard input. Now I can start with my measurements. I connect my bench power supply to the buck converter and the converter to the data logger. Then I connect two LiPo batteries to the output of the logger. For my experiment, I set the output voltage of the converter to 8.4 volts, which is the maximum charging voltage for two LiPo cells. The current limitation is adjusted to 1000 milliamperes. And the current for the charging indicator LED is 100 mA. To monitor the two LEDs with my data logger, I built a simple device consisting of two photoresistors and two 4.7 kilo ohm resistors. These sensors produce a high voltage if the LED is on and a smaller voltage if the LED is off. It is not very precise because the two LEDs are very close and the sensors will pick up lights from both LEDs. However, it is sufficient and with some Excel tricks I can remove this effect. Now let's start the experiment. LiPos are completely discharged, the buck converter adjusted and the Excel started up. The plus pole of the battery is still disconnected. First I zero the current sensor. In the next step I could adjust the voltage. But because the adjustment is stored in the EEPROM, it is already precise and I do not have to change it. After plugging in the batteries, the loading begins. I just have to press the rotary encoder switch to start data logging and go to bed. This is why I love computers. They work when I sleep. It is now in the morning and I stopped the logger. Excel contains all data and with a few clicks I created this chart. It shows the loading curve of the two LiPos. At the beginning the current is 1000 mA and after a while, 4981 seconds to be precise, the first LED goes out. Because the current is now below the limit. The batteries are now loaded in the constant voltage mode. As soon as the current drops below the 100 mA threshold, the second LED goes off and indicates that the battery is fully loaded. The goal of this episode was to confirm the function of the trimmers and the LEDs on a buck converter. This is why I had to build a data logger with direct input to Excel. For sure, this was an overkill. But this was not the only usage of this device. 
In the next episode, I will use it to check the performance of different AA batteries. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Bye.